yeah, during those three years, I kept on working and I was looking, shall I go for, like, what shall I do next? Like everyone. And I still have the same question. Then I was looking for colleges. I did my CAT exam for MBA. I got into a very nice college. And like, uh, and on the same side, I came to know about BIT Jaipur. And one day I came down and met Vibhuti sir way before the admission. And I just showed him whatever little I could draw. Then he guided me, hey, do this or th this way. And down the line, I appeared for the exam here. And Vibhuti sir and everyone was pretty kind to accept me. So that's how animation actually like came to life completely or full time. Oh, that's great, sir. Okay. Okay. Right, the VR animated film was yes. selected for recognition in Annecy in France. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. What led you to choose virtual reality or augmented reality in your project? And what was the challenges did you face? while working with this medium and how is it different from traditional filmmaking techniques uh firstly like fry height it wasn't just me there were few graduates from bit who were working with me uh chandan singh shekhavat rishabh banshkar um there was one more girl i forgot her name she was the modeler for us uh, I think she's still studying or may she might have graduated this year or last year, but there are like three other BIT graduates with us. Uh, uh, is she Archal, ma'am? Yes, Archal, Archal Kedia, yes. Archal Kedia, she was there for the whole time, like for the modeling, everything. And Chandan was working with her, texturing, lighting. So everything was going on with them. Uh, Working with VR or AR, like I have been doing VR AR for eight years now on the side. And the storytelling or the gra language is still the same, but I would say it's just the grammar has changed for virtual reality. How you tell story in a virtual world where everything like you can move around in 360 and find whatever you want instead of like a flat screen or a 2D space. So the grammar has actually changed the way you tell or how your camera moves or how the philosophy changes, that's it. But the basic film language remains the same, be it animation for a, like a flat screen or a virtual reality cam, uh, virtual reality. Uh, Hanjit, emotions were one of the most important aspect of your virtual reality project, Fry Height, from yes. the starting point. And as you mentioned in one of your interviews that it was very challenging for you to get the characters to act that well. So in animation, how important uh, do you think drawing is in defining the emotions and actions of the character? Uh, well, animation is all about acting actually. So the drawing has to be a secondary nature to you. So while you're animating something, you shouldn't be thinking, is my drawing correct or not? Or is there volume there or not? Is my perspective there or not? It should be immaculate. You just have to concentrate on acting, acting there because like animators, they do the same thing what actors do in front of a camera. They go in front of a camera, the director calls action, they start acting, bring out their emotions. But the animators do the same behind the camera with a paper and a pencil or a vacuum like digitally these days, but they're doing the same thing which actors do in front of a camera. They're just bringing out their emotions. And at that time, they're never thinking, uh, shall I do it this way or shall I do it that way? They know what has to be done because the time is limited, budgets are limited. Just the production is has a very limited schedule. So that's how it works. And same way with animation, uh, the animators, only need to concentrate on acting rather than thinking, oh, whether my drawing is correct or not. So drawing has to be a secondary nature. Uh, during all this while, so you have worked in India, France, Belgium, London, and USA. So how do you find Indian animation industry different from other industries? 
uh, for Indian animation, I would say they are very good at the commercial stuff. And I've only seen two feature length movies from India. Three actually. One was done by uh, Ram Mohan along with Studio Ghibli in Japan, uh, Ramayan. That was like 90s or maybe earlier than that. I was like two or three years old. Like very fine quality that I'm mentioning. Like that's the first feature film from India that I remember, which has international standard in terms of quality, acting, uh, cinematography, editing, sound design, color design, color theory. The second one that I remember, uh, I think it's based on Mahabharata, Arjun, I think. It's like a 3D, it's done in 3D, but rendered out in a Maya vector, like 2D space, 2D color space. That's the another one that I remember. That's only it. Like in terms of feature films, animated feature films, India is pretty pretty behind. Um, and I'm not saying that talent is not there. Like all the people that I work with, they're all spread out. France, Belgium, either other India. The talent is there. They know how how things have to be done. Like something like the uh, instead of just focusing on like feature big budget live action movies, the, uh, the focus has to move on to the Indian animation as well. And when we were in ANSI two years ago and even four years back, every country was there representing their animation. India wasn't there. The only Indian animation short that I remember that has won at ANSI was in 2000. That was Suresh Ariyat's short movie that won in 2000. He got the, uh, the blue prism or one of their awards. That's the only animation that I remember from India winning an award outside India at a very grand scale, like ANSI. So in general, India is pretty pretty behind in animation. Not saying that there's not talent. Talent, there's ample talent. All the major animation studios they have, it gets outsourced to Bangalore for the 3D animation. And they're all they, they all are Indian animators who are uh, get giving the quality of international standards so the talent is there just either the government has to do something focus on something uh, every country has its own thing the governments along with the private sector they merge together to focus something on their art or bring out their level india doesn't do that okay uh, so my next question is about time management skills Please tell us about your typical work day. How many hours need to be devoted to work in a week for an animator working on several projects? Um, it's a bit pretty tricky thing. Uh, like these days I'm putting 16 to 17 hours a day because the show has to be delivered it's coming out next year in November for a major like a major subscription service. So again, when the deadline comes in, the working hours increase to 16, 18, 16, 18 on an average easily. But in general, uh, for animation or even in film, it's not like a nine to five job that you have come in at nine, leave at five. It's never like that. So these days my day is starting at six in the morning or seven in the morning. And it's going on till sometimes 8.30, 9 p.m. It's usually going like that. The only advice that, I don't know whether it's an advice or what, but uh, you got to kill sleep for it. Uh, do you participate in art fairs or attend local events that allow you to showcase your work because for an animation student it is very important to go out for inspiration and exposure uh, i used to do it i would say three years ago four years ago i would try to reach out to like local art stuff but after the after like doing it for two or three months i stopped doing it i mean it takes time to contact them set up a gallery, meet with them, prepare the artwork. Uh, instead of that, I do like, I lead rit literature. Um, and in LA, you have theater plays every week, every Thursday, every Saturday. So sometimes if I have time, I go there just to attend 
uh, and most of my friends here are like directors or actors. So if something has to be done, I just go on set with them to see what's happening there, just for inspiration. And I always have my like a small sketchbook with me. These days I'm not sketching much, maybe one sketch a day or two sketch a day. Uh, but earlier at like BIT when I was there and even after that, I would sketch like 100 to 200 sketches a day, something like that. And I would show it to Gotham sir every day, like every evening. Gotham sir, <laughs> and Gotham sir like, ah, yeah, chani aise, ye line aise aana chahiye, aise aana chahiye, pencil aise chalni chahiye. But yeah, Gotham sir helped me like during my BIT days. Gotham sir like taught me how how the pencil works actually. Uh, Anjali, how have you uh, developed your career work experience, your studio practice? the exhibitions you are working on or have participated in and how those opportunities came about and how have you gone about solidifying a solid base of followers and contacts? Mm, for like exhibitions and all the studio, like the work culture, once you go into it in like a studio or once you start in a production, you actually come to know you get you get acclimated to that culture, whatever, however it is. Like one time I was on a production which would begin four in the morning every day. Like so you have to be there by 3.30 or 3.45 a.m. And it would get done by 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. something like that. So again, you would adjust whatever is happening there because you're not the only person who is coming there. There's people who reach two hours before you so they can set up everything for you. So you are there, you just do the work and you move on and you go away. That has to be very flexible. Uh, there's no social life, first of all, uh, because by the time you're done, you come back, you're pretty tired. You just want to like sit. And I watch SpongeBob SquarePants when I'm that tired. Or I watch Tom and Jerry. Uh, but for the like studio culture, if you're talking about Disney or Paramount, Sony, they have a fixed thing. Like they're working on a feature movie. It goes on for like three, four years very easily. So. They have like a set rule, okay, this has to be done this way. But if you're more in an independent environment where even it's being funded by distribution companies or production houses, the time schedule ranges from, it can be anything. So uh, we have to be very adaptable, like whatever hap whatever is happening there, according to, the, according to the production. And once you do like four or five productions here and there, your body comes to know, okay, this is how it has to work or um, if you do it this way, it will, be, it will be more efficient and effective for you. It comes over, like I would say, with two or three years of ex just working there, you'll come to know what works and what doesn't. For the exhibitions, it for one exhibition, it took me actually two years to actually get that exhibition in place. That was like start uh, having an initial conversation with them for finally having the exhibition out there, the virtual reality exhibition that we did. It took about two years just for having a word with them and then finally delivering the product there. For the other contacts, it's all very volatile business. If you are working there and I work for you, you are the director. We work together. Someone, one of your friends says, oh, I'm looking for this and this person or this editor, this director. You'll say, oh, I've worked with this and this guy, I've worked with that girl. Give her a try, give him a try. If it works out, have them full time. So that's how it works. Like that's how the connection actually built up here. No one, no one has ever asked me for my degree. Not that it's not important if they say I'll present it to them, but usually they always go by your name or your reputation or your work ethic, that's it. And everyone, it's a very small industry, first of all be it animation or film in general, it's a very small uh, industry and in film animation is like one much smaller chunk. So everyone knows each other. If you do something bad or something good, if the word goes around next day that, oh, this was done. So you got to be careful that way. Anshit, how did the brand name of BIT support you in getting recognized and what all uh, resources and opportunities does BIT bring to us? 
uh, the resources, Gautam sir, Vibhuti sir, Inka Talan. That's the biggest resource you have there. Um, if someone thinks I can get a, like, if I can work on a vacuum or I'll be more successful or my skill will increase, I, I really, very highly doubt that. It's not going to happen. Uh, like Vidyat sir also taught us, uh, he's not at BIT Jaipur anymore, he's in Chandigarh. But like Vidyat sir, Gautam sir, Vibhuti sir, I would say these are the biggest resources that you have at BIT Jaipur, um, who know how everything works. And they, they're rooted to the, like the basic traditions, like that is paper and pencil. So if you have a very solid foundation, like computer stuff is pretty easy after that. So that's the biggest resource that BIT has given me or can give to anyone else. The work environment gets a little bit competitive as lots of young talented minds are working on the same project and so so how do you maintain a good space while working on the same page and maintaining a healthy environment with others yes so that's very one other important thing that we always take care about when we are hiring someone we usually hire our friends or someone we know because we know down the line when the when the clock is ticking, the deadlines are there, and you have to be you have to work with that person for sixteen hours straight in the same room, in the same cutting room, in the same facility. You have to get along with each other pretty well. If it's even if someone is a little uh, what's the word, a little bitchy about something or a little messy about something, usually we usually avoid it working with that guy or girl. It's always how cordial you can be with each other or how perseverant you can be, like how much patience you have, because like uh, the tempers get high usually. Not that everyone, each, someone will start yelling at each other, but you can feel the tension is there because deadlines are there, people are working long hours. So everyone knows before stepping into this thing that, hey, it will be like that. If someone's thinking I'll be home by 4.30 or 5.30, have my tea, then they're in the like, wrong feel i would say animation or film is not for them very clearly so yeah we are very cautious about who we are hiring with each other whether can they handle handle that stress first of all that's secondary firstly is can i can i work with them or not in a friendly environment for 16 hours straight without of course there are arguments we have every two hours three hours but it's not an altercation that we do with them what educational preparation would you recommend for someone who wants to advance in this field? Like, what qualifications do you seek in a new hire? So, can you uh, recommend any courses that we, mostly the second and third year students, as they have ample amount of time to go for courses at this stage and take along with studies to gain an edge for the job search? Uh, I can divide it in a multiple format how they want it. If they are the first year undergrad, even grad students like masters or masters, I would still say they, they should concentrate on the basics, just drawing stuff, drawing skills and make sure their hand is pretty free. So like when they're drawing, they don't have to think whether it is getting right or wrong, like just draw it. So it has to be like, again, the second nature, practice that enough. And one area is pretty fine time to advance your skill. Now I can show you my sketches um, before I joined BIT. You can ask Vibhuti sir or Gautam sir. And by the time I left BIT, it wasn't like the master of it, but still I improved impressively. And I still have those sketches with me from my past eight years. I have one sketchbook of each of every year, whatever I did. So I would say for first year students or second year students still uh, have a good command of your drawing skills over your pencil, pen, whatever like medium they want to. For the students who are in like third year and they're graduating year, if you are a VFX person who wants to specifically focus on VFX, I would say see some movies or see some breakdown how that VFX was done for Wonder Woman or any TV show 
everything is being like VFX is used very heavily these days. Be it a TV show, uh, be it a feature movie, or like even a small animation, even in games, like the special effects are being used. So for that, I would say learn Nuke. Like by and when I say learn Nuke, you should know Nuke completely in and out. Take some time. It takes like about a year just to get about a month just to get acclimatized to that software, how it works, what it is. But by the year, I would say you'll be pretty flexible in it. For secondary reasons, if you want to go in editing and still be con uh, connected to the VFX, learn After Effects. Because most of our VFX that we do, like the temp VFX, if I'm editing something, we have a temp VFX editor or a second assistant editor. We'll just give that shot to him or her. He or she will do a like very basic thing in After Effects and send it back to us. So at that time, they don't have to think whether they know the software or not. When some we are, whenever we are hiring someone, we always think, oh, they know that software or they do know that tool in and out. So we never question them much. Do you know that tool or not? We always consider that yes, he or she knows that tool in and out. We only are concentrating on the philosophy at that time. Uh, that's what for VFX for gaming. I would say, if you're a modeler, then yeah, Maya, uh, Blender, 3D Cinema, 4D Cinema. Sorry, like all those are very basic stuff that we are like. You gotta have it on your skills. Plus texturing, shading, mapping, um, the occlusion maps, the normal maps. Because these days the games have advanced a lot. Like the processes that you're getting in your Xbox, PS4, they're very advanced and they can handle very high polygon rate. So you need to know what works and what doesn't work. For mobile gaming, if you're going only targeting the specific mobile gaming, I would say Maya is a pretty big deal. If you know Maya, the modeling, the shading and everything, and even low poly, and you can bake stuff, you bake your textures, animation and models, you'll be getting, you'll be hired right away, like at least as a technical person in the beginning, and then you can hone your craft to go into more into aesthetics. That was for game. If you're talking about animation, uh, every company has its own tools. Some use Toon Boom Harmony. Some have their own in-house tools. Like one of the things that we worked on, they were using Adobe Animate. And I never worked on Animate before. So it, I took like four or five days just to see what the software is. Down the line, like every software has the same functions. The animation remains the same. The tools change, the names change. So even if you know one software in and out, the other software will be like four or five days of work, just sitting with them and playing around what work, what works, what doesn't work. So it is pretty easy that way. For animation, again, you need to know acting. If you don't know acting, um, like it will be hard for you to jump into character animation. You can do like this other model stuff like 3D, uh, the object animation, tank, car, blah, blah, still, but there's no character into it. You need to build in the character. So you need to understand how acting works for that, for an animator specifically. They should, they should read literature or they should read a few uh, acting professionals like Stanislavski, Chekhov. They're like the act acting gurus who wrote down there a few notes or like few yardsticks they lay down or oh, this has to be done this way this is their way like someone is a method actor if method actor is a person who goes into the role whether it's on the movie or outside the movie so when he or she's at home he or she will be acting like oh i'm in, still in that same character so if you're going for animation you actually need to read a lot read literature make sure your drawing skills are second nature to you and make sure you know acting. So watch a lot of live action movies, good actors. Uh, for Indian, from Indian actors, I would say Ompuri is there, Nasruddin Shah, Nawazuddin Siddiqui, uh, Shabana Azmi, uh, Tiska Chopra. They're pretty fine actors. If you just, even if they don't speak, you can come to know what are they saying or what do they mean. And that's a pretty high skill in acting. For like the Western side of actors, you can check Laura Dern, uh, El Pacino, Morgan Freeman, Jim Carrey. Again, they have different styles, but again, it's acting without saying a word. They convey everything to you. Uh, for more of a storytelling standpoint, 
I would say watch a lot of movies, a lot, a lot, a lot. Watch a movie a day, like for the whole year, at least watch 100 movies, both uh, Indian, outside, whether it's a good movie or bad movie. And there are a few directors I would heavily recommend everyone to watch those movies from uh, Meera Nair, uh, uh, Anurag Kashyap, Fritz Lang, uh, Ingmar Bergman, Christian Mungiu, uh, who else? Hitchcock. Like, watch those movies. Watch the movies, how those directors work, how they bring their actions to life, and read scripts of the movies as well. All these scripts are available online these days. So you can actually read the script and see the movie and see, okay, what works, what, how did they translate the words into visuals? So I can see some students super excited and curious to ask uh -huh. questions. So I would like to hand over the mic to the students so that their queries can be answered. Uh -huh. so, thanks to Archie, she'll be asking a question. Hello, sir. Uh, my Hi. name is Anji. Anji. I would like to know that is there any common thread or any concept or theme that connects all your projects? Any theme or anything that you follow in every single project you do? Yes, death. Sorry? Death, death. Okay. <laughs> like uh, anything related to the art, uh, art theme? Um, you mean like the visual style? Yeah. Charcoal. Like very, uh, very whimsical. Like these days I have been practicing watercolors for over an year now. Just so I can in, in implement the same in my next um, movie or whatever is coming in. It's very whimsical, I would say. Very impressionistic and very whimsical. That's, uh, that's the visual style that I personally like a lot. Um, there's a Japanese director called Isahao Takahata. He does very similar to that stuff again. Uh, if, if you can check out his movies. One of his movies is called Grave of Fireflies. Uh, another one is called Princess Kaguya. And there's another very funny, uh, like, answer, what's it called? It's like a sh short movie is made into a, like a feature. It's called uh, My Neighbor Yamadas. So he has a very, very whimsical style. I like that a lot. And I do the same something like I am practicing the same kind of style from the past eight, nine months now. So I like charcoal. I like watercolors, which is something very impressionistic, not very realism. Not that, not that kind of stuff. Anything else? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, next we have uh, Elvira. Yeah, hello. I Hi. wanted to ask. Yeah, I wanted to ask as a filmmaker, what are some key points that you would suggest for a potentially successful movie? Uh, okay, it can be dealt two ways. Successful movie, whether if you you can be talking about a commercial movie, which has a uh, big budget. Uh, big actors who don't know how to act, but they're still there, dancing around, blah, whatever, whatever. Uh, not saying it's bad, but the other one is like more of an independent stuff or very indie stuff. So if it's if you're going for like very commercial stuff, like very commercial movies, or that's what you want to continue your career in down the line, uh, I would say you can concentrate more upon how they uh, how they talk to the actors just in general and usually they have only one thing which is common like the very three act structure that you read in a storytelling act one says you introduce the character act two is the conflict happens act three is they resolve everything that's a very commercial filmmaking be it bollywood hollywood or anywhere else in other countries usually they follow that but if you're going for more of an independent stuff or uh, have you seen salam bombay um, let me think of a movie so I can relate, like answer that question better. 
Name any animated movie that you recently watched. But have you seen Wall E? I watched The Wind Rises by. You have seen The Wind Rises, right? Uh, Miyazaki's Wind Rises. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good example. So it did very good commercially. Like whatever money they invested, they got like ten times back. It did very well commercially on box office, but if you see more of a just storytelling as a filmmaker, a story in a uh, story can only come from a character. If the character is not there, he or she, the story will not be there. Very similar. Let's suppose you are not here in this room right now, or you are not in BIT Jaipur. Your story would have been something else, right? So it's always on the character. If the character is not there, the story will not be there for you. So make sure if you are making, if you like a true filmmaker or you actually wanna have fun with it, develop a character as much as you can. 